and welcome to High School Physics Explained. My hope is that you've watched my previous video on the workings of the plasma ball because today I want to look at a number of demonstrations that you can do with the plasma ball but also go through some of the physics that is involved with those demonstrations. Of course, in order for this to work, I need to turn the lights down, which I will do. But let's start with the first demonstration. The first demonstration I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how I can turn a light bulb bulb from a distance. So as I bring the light bulb closer and closer to the plasma dome, you will see that it will light up. Now, why is that? Well, inside, of course, we have a stream of negatively charged particles that are streaming, and those are the plasma tendrils that you are seeing. But what is also happening is that we have a stream of electrons and an electric field around this, and that is causing the gas molecules inside to light up as the electrons within the tube itself start to go in and out of the orbits of the gas molecules and therefore lighting it up. Now, not only does it show the presence of an electric field, it also shows us the strength of the electric field. So if I'm really close, I'm going to get a really strong value. If I bring it back, I'm going to get a much weaker value. So the strength of the electric field can be determined simply by moving my fluorescent light away and towards my dome. So, and that's our first demonstration. Our second demonstration involves a straight fluorotube. And you can see as I draw it across the top, you're gonna to see it light up. Again, the same effect. We have an electric field outside, we have moving electrons as a result, and they're causing the light inside to be generated as the electrons jump in and out of, or out of certain orbits or energy levels to be more specific, and therefore release light. Now, I can show you also that I can short circuit this. So if I grab this from one end and bring it down, my hand and my body provides a path for the electrons for the current to flow. And so it's darker at one end and clearly still on at the other. And all I have to do is move my hand backwards and forwards to cause that to happen. But again, due to the nature of the electromagnetic field around it, or electric, um, electric field around, which is strong and close and weak further out, we're going to see that effect. So that's our second demonstration. Now our third demonstration involves these. These are called discharge tubes. And in the physics classroom, you would connect them to a high voltage supply. So the gases will light up and they have a very distinct color. That's in essence because the energy levels that the electrons jump in and out of are at very specific frequencies. So, so different gases will have different colors. And it's the reason why my plasma ball has different colors as well. So let's start with neon. Neon, of course, is a very familiar uh, particular gas, noble gas. And as you can see, it lights up really nice and brightly. And so that color is distinctive to neon. So if you look on the inside of the dome, you'll see that color present. And so the color around the Tesla coil, around the areas where it is going to hit the edge, that's what's causing the color that we have. If I now grab xenon, it's another gas in there as well. And xenon gives us a very distinctive bluish color. And you'll notice that this color is very similar to the tendrils that we see inside here. Most likely is the color in these tendrils is due to the xenon that's present within this dome. And then lastly, we have krypton. Now, krypton is a gas. I'm not sure if you're watching this and you have a basic knowledge of chemistry, but krypton is not a solid like Superman, which is often referred as kryptonite, but actually it's a noble gas and it has a very distinctive color. Again, you'll see this sort of bluish, purplish haze and that tells you that most of the frequencies are in the higher frequency range and again most likely the colors of the tendrils inside are probably due to some of the krypton as well that that you see in the terms of the tendrils. So again we have a vol high voltage supply here and I can actually light up discharge tubes with it. And now for my really scientific example, I'm going to bring this in. This is a cathode ray tube. And in the cathode ray tube, we have 
a cathode and an anode and I have a video where I discuss the movement of charges within electric fields and magnetic fields and I use this device. But I want to show you that you don't need a particularly high voltage supply like an induction coil like I do in that video. I can use this plasma dome. And so if I bring this close together you will notice I have a green beam and that green beam is the electrons hitting the metal plate and thereby releasing some fluorescent light. So the presence of the green beam shows you the presence of electrons. But I can deflect those electrons simply by touching the top terminal, like so. Or I can deflect it the other way, like so. Now why is that? Well, these two terminals are within this electric field, so we have on this side and this side more positiveness on than the other side as the electrons sort of are repelled on that side. So they're equal in terms of polarity. But when I touch one terminal, some of those electrons escape my finger. So in other words, the bottom becomes more negative than the top. And so what we end up having is an electric field that in this case is going down and therefore causes my beam to deflect. Similarly, if I touch the bottom, this now becomes more positive than the top terminal and my deflection goes the other way. So that's the basic physics of it, but I wanted to show you this demonstration because you can use the plasma dome not just to play with, and amaze your friends, but there's some really good physics that you could do as well if you've got this equipment, and certainly your teacher will have that too. And maybe you are a teacher watching this, well here is a great demonstration that you can use the plasma ball for without uh, resorting to expensive high voltage supplies. The last one is my favorite and the one that can cause the most pain. So I would be cautious about this one. I'm going to turn this off initially and I'm going to place a metal piece of foil, in other words, aluminium foil. Now what I can do now is I can show you the effect of actually having plasma outside the dome. We don't have plasma outside normally because the air pressure outside is too high. We don't have enough energy for the electrons to jump through the air and ionize the air and cause plasma. But if I sort of have a conductor up the top, I can create that um, high voltage up here. Now, if I were to turn this on and touch it with my fingers, it's going to hurt. So I'm a chicken and I'm not going to do that. And in fact, I would recommend you not do that. In this case, I'm just going to use a metal skewer and that will allow me to see the sparking at the top. And what we're getting is plasma. We're calling this, we basically have um, arcing going on here and you have a blue light and in essence, it's the same as lightning. So what we have is a high voltage causing this discharge. And I'll turn it on and let's see if we can see the sparking. And I'll also use my macro lenses to get in a little closer. Now it's definitely arcing as a result, but it's really small, but it's there. Now to prove that it's there, I'm going to show you another little trick. Again, do this with great caution. I've got some paper towel here, and paper towel, of course, is reasonably flammable. So the question is, is the, enough, is the arc in there enough to light my paper towel? Now do this with safety. I would be, actually prefer you not to do this at home, simply because I would do not want you to light your house on fire. So I've got nothing flammable in my area, and I'm going to stop this as soon as I finish to ensure that I don't ignite anything. But I want to show you that this arcing is hot enough to ignite the paper. And the paper only needs 400 degrees to do so, and the sparking is clearly higher than 400 degrees. So there you can see I've burned some nice holes in my paper. So that's the plasma dome. There may be other experiments you can do with the plasma dome. So if you have a great experiment, why don't you put a comment down below and tell me the experiments that you've done with the plasma dome. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Thanks for watching. 
please subscribe, press the bell to, hear my, to get my latest updates, and bye for now. Thanks for watching. Please remember, like, share, and subscribe. And by the way, drop a comment down below if the video particularly has been useful. And finally, consider supporting me via Patreon. The idea is to develop resources and equipment to continue to teach physics at a high school level. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.